chapter 15. And verse 50. To verse 52. Hallelujah. First of all, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, their strength shall be renewed. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and go weary. They shall walk and not faint. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50, it says, Paul speaking to the believers in the Corinthian church. He says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Verse 51 said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall raise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall he be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that our labor is not in vain. To God be the glory. You magnify your word above your name. Thank you for the word which is quicker, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword penetrate even to the dividing asunder of spirit, soul, joints, and marrow, and it judges the desires and thoughts of our hearts. Thank you for the word of God. The table is spread, and the feast of the Lord is about to take place. Feed your people, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, in verse 50, Paul told the brethren in the Corinthians church, This I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, to begin, flesh and blood is the material of which the physical body is composed of. But from a biblical perspective, flesh and blood is corrupt. Flesh and blood is weak. Flesh and blood is sinful. Flesh and blood is perishable. For example, in Romans chapter 7 and verse 8, 
Paul, praise God, the Apostle Paul says, For I know, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Paul is saying this not as an unsaved person. He is saying this as a born-again believer who is filled with the Spirit of God and who is also pregnant with the Word of God. He said, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Now, the no good thing in his flesh is his fallen nature that is dominated by sinful passion, sinful pursuit, and a desire to sin. That's why the Apostle Paul says, I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. He is saying to his body, Body, I will not allow you to do whatever you want to do. That's right. Before I was born again, you held me in bondage. But now I am born again. Who the sun set free is free indeed. Now, his fallen nature, praise God, as I said earlier, is dominated by sinful passion sinful pursuit and sinful desire which bear, amen, the fruit of death. That's why in Romans 6.23 it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's what God wants us to confess. He wants us to confess life and not death. The Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. I'd rather speak life rather than speak in death. Amen? Amen? That's what God wants us to speak is life. Not carefully. The Apostle Paul continued. He said, Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Now, flesh and blood comes under corruption while the kingdom of God comes under incorruption. What we see here is that corruption and incorruption never agree. Even they are contrary, they have different pursuit. There is a, a different agenda here. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 17, He said, Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth an evil fruit. Now, let me break that down, or allow me to break it down. The good tree, amen, represent the children of the kingdom of light. Amen. Remember that God prayed, has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are indeed a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and a holy nation. The Bible says, be holy because God is holy. Amen. And without holiness, no man can see the face of God. And the corrupt tree represent the children of the kingdom of darkness. They still sit in darkness. And even though, praise God, and we, we have to remember also that we were in darkness before God called us out of darkness. And those of our relatives and friends who is still in darkness, we have a responsibility to go and witness to them and tell them about God's plan and salvation for their life so that they too will come out of darkness and experience 
the life that we're in. Amen? If we don't go to them, they will always remain in darkness. Amen? Remember that darkness is the opposite to light. Amen? He Paul said in verse 51, he, said, he told the brethren in the Corinthians church, he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, the mystery is a secret that God revealed to Paul through the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the mystery. Paul told the believers in the Corinthians church, We shall not all sleep. Here is where you need revelation. Amen? Now, by the word sleep, Paul is not talking about physical sleep. But Paul is referring to those believers who would not experience physical death at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, this revelation, this mystery, was given by it was given to Paul by the Holy Spirit concerning the resurrection or the rapture. Rapture, although the word is not mentioned in the Bible, it still makes sense to use it because it means to be caught up. Resurrection also means to be caught up. Amen? So I don't see the word rapture as a controversy. Amen? Praise God. Amen? Now, they will be transformed, praise God, immediately and made perishable or imperishable, amen, and immortal when Christ return, amen. Again, Paul says, we shall not all sleep. Now, when Paul used the plural, we, he was telling the believers in the Corinthians church that Jesus Christ could come, amen, in his lifetime. Jesus Christ, amen, would come in our lifetime. That's why we always have to be ready. We always have to be prepared and don't take things for granted. Amen? Therefore, Paul was right, amen, the revelation he received from God, amen, and he conveyed to the brethren in the Corinthians church, praise God, that we shall not all sleep, meaning, praise God, that, praise God, those of us, praise God, who are alive, amen, Christ could come and rapture his church at any time. Now, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. Let's go there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a shout, and with, praise God, the trump of God, and with the voice of an archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yes. Now, the dead in Christ that shall rise first are those believers who experience physical death before Christ's return. <coughs> they will be resurrected or rapture first. Amen? Now, at the same time of Christ's return, even for his faithful believers who die in him, not carefully, verse 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain 
shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that church. Now, remember, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51, Paul says, we shall not all sleep. Now, this is exactly what he meant when he said in this verse, we which are alive and remain. You get a revelation. Amen? Amen. He's referring to those believers who would still be alive and who would not experience physical death, but will be caught up together with them. Now, them is a reference to those believers who die in Christ, amen, and were resurrected. Amen. So, here we see that is not the end. There is life after death. And if you die without Christ, amen, then your eternal destiny will be hell. And from hell, praise God, you will go into the lake of fire. Amen, praise God. Amen. But if you die in, if you die in Christ, our, your eternal destiny would be in heaven. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? That's right. Praise God. Finally, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 40, Jesus said, Two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, one left. Now, one taken from the, from, from the field, and the other taken from the mill points to the unexpected resurrection. Points to the unexpected rapture. Jesus, when he returned to rapture his church, he will take away the save from the lost. He will take away the unrighteous, or he will take away the righteous from the unrighteous. This is going to be a great separation and also an element of surprise. Now, it doesn't matter how close two people, and I believe I mentioned this some time ago in one of my teaching, it doesn't matter how close two people may be in life. Amen, praise God, whether you're whether husband or wives or children or friends, they cannot guarantee the same eternal destiny. One will be taken and one left. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Finally, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21, says, The Lord shall change our vile body. The word vile here means that Christ will change our bodies from mortal to immortality. From moral impurity to spiritual purity, it would be a glorified body, amen, that will no longer be subject to sin, sickness, disease, and the death. Right now, praise God, our body is subject to sin, sickness, disease, and death. But when we have been resurrected, Amen. When the dead in Christ shall rise first, they will be given a glorified body. A body, praise God, that will no longer be subject, praise God, to sickness, disease, and death. Right. To God be the glory. Amen. Great things he has done. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, Sister Williams, I just want you to come and pray. Amen. Praise God. Pray in line with the word of God that has just been preached. Come, Sister Williams, praise. 